you have to either react or you have to, or you're gonna, you know, fold. And I chose to react because I didn't see any other way of me, you know, living. And that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to live. Two things used to be easy for everyone to do. Number one, praise Americans for acts of bravery. Number two, agree that white supremacists are bad. Remember when Captain America fought Nazis and Wonder Woman's main job was fighting Nazis and respected archeology span professors were cheered on for punching Nazis? And comedians' jokes about anti-Semitism were so hilarious because of how absurd the idea of being on the side of white supremacists slash neo-Nazis was? What a time the OOs were. I mean, even now, since we've apparently legitimized white supremacy and are scared of hurting today's hatred-filled losers by saying, oh, your views are not half the story, can we point out a real hero who saved innocent lives on American soil? Would that be so hard? Why is that so hard, Donnie? James Shaw Jr. single-handedly disarmed a terrorist with his bare hands. What stops a bad guy with a gun? In this case, a good guy with no gun. A brave as hell, bona fide hero who did what NRA activists and Donald Trump claimed they would do, save lives from a bad man shooter, but haven't on record done once. James Shaw Jr. killed absolutely no one in the process, but put a stop to pure carnage. He took a weapon of war, an AR-15, out of the hands of a civilian who was using it to murder other civilians in a Waffle House restaurant. His level of heroism sounds like something Captain America or Indiana Jones might do, except he's real. He's a 29-year-old electrician and father. I'm just a regular guy. I never thought I'd be up here in a full pit looking at all of you in your eyes. That's at a church vigil for the four victims killed by gunman Travis Reinking, the murderer whose gun Shaw burned his hands on while intervening. He visited tearful survivors at the hospital, children who told him he saved their lives. Shaw even started a GoFundMe to help the victims' families. He won't say he's a hero, but damn, this man is a hero. And Reinking? He's no regular guy. He's stolen a car and led police on a chase, brandished a rifle while wearing a dress and screaming at his dad's employee, exposed himself at a public pool, and as police say in a 2016 incident report, Travis is hostile toward police and does not recognize police authority. Travis also possesses several firearms. Oh, and he really wanted to meet Donald Trump. It should be easy, right? Any child could see this story has a clear-cut hero and an obvious villain. A child could write the parable and their teacher would hand it back saying it was too cliche. Yet Donald Trump cannot see this. Any other president would have thanked Shaw for stopping a killer in the midst of firing on innocent people, or at least addressed that it happened, not this one. The shooting occurred on April 22nd. As I record this video, it has been four days and the president's notoriously loud Twitter feed is silent on anything related to this major terrorist shooting on U.S. soil. He's too busy being weird about French President Emmanuel Macron. It's ridiculous. The silence is deafening. It's sniveling. Pathetic. Is Trump really so scared of upsetting his white supremacist base that he won't say anything about an American tragedy? Can you imagine how this would go down if Shaw were white and Ryan King were anything but? That's not the case. It doesn't fit the narrative that black Americans who are just trying to live their lives are threatening and neo-Nazis are, quote, very fine people. It doesn't fit the NRA's bloody narrative that civilians need automatic weapons for protection? Reality doesn't support the narrative of some fragile white conservatives continually depicting themselves in whatever way, religion, race, class, as the most deserving of victims. Tamir Rice was a victim. Deontay Yarber was a victim. The idea that Trump's white supremacist diehards who can ignore murder in favor of their internal festering hatred are getting coddled and normalized while black Americans just asking for basic human dignity are treated like monstrous threats is insane. Last week, Nazis marched in Noonan, Georgia, unmasked, unashamed, proud, feeling more justified than ever. No other modern American president would abide this. Trump's terrified. If he steps out of line, he'll lose the support of these ingrates who still stand beside him despite every out onioning the onion level thing he's done. That's not a man who deserves a military parade or respect or support. That's a coward. I'm Kim Horcher. You can follow me on Twitter and don't stay silent. None of this is normal.